Hello, welcome to the Zungo Artisan Vlog, Knowledge Edition. Today our topic of conversation is car internal combustion engines. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay informed and gain knowledge on various topics related to artisanship and DIY. The Persistent Driver the world is filled with these magnificent vessels that we use on a daily basis to carry things, move around, and sometimes to move in one place. Okay. Nonetheless, cars are surely an extremely essential tool in our activity ridden lives. Be it small cars, big cars, slow cars, and well, fast cars. Yeah. But how do they move? What powers them? Join us on yet another journey on which we dig our way through history and the present to understand the internal combustion engines of cars. The Origins In the early years, engines were built to aid in different industries, including the power or electricity generation industry, the metal forging industry, the transportation industry, and in many other necessary industrial dimensions. At first, wind was used to power some stationary engines, but it was less reliable as wind is unpredictable. The very first practical engines were heat engines, which relied on coal and water to produce their power. These engines used coal as a source of heat to boil the water into steam which then pushed the pistons to work the engines. But the steam engine lacked efficiency compared to other engines such as the oil engine which used vaporized compressed air and oil for combustion and gas engines which used gas produced from the burning of coal. This brought about a few new engines such as the petrol engine and the diesel engine to battle the inefficiency of these early engines. Different fuels, different strokes. In the modern day, the most common types of engines we find in cars are petrol and diesel. Although somewhat being different in principle, these two engines share the same power producing element, which is combustion. The combustion engine produces power by facilitating the combustion of air and the fuel. Both types of engines consist of cylinders or combustion chambers in which the combustion occurs. The fuel is mixed with pure air and the mixture is pressurized to allow for an effective explosion. With the petrol engine, air and petrol are pumped into the combustion chamber together as the piston moves towards the bottom. The piston then moves back up, pressurizing the mixture. At the same time, a spark plug sparks, igniting the air and petrol mixture. With the diesel engine, the air is pumped in first as the piston goes down. Then when the piston goes back up, it compresses the air, giving it enough pressure for combustion. Then the diesel fuel is injected in at that time, causing an ignition. The piston is pushed by the explosion caused by the ignition, causing it to move back down and pushing the crankshaft, which then spins. The spinning of the crankshaft transfers motion to the transmission, which then drives the differential, causing the wheels to spin. Having multiple chambers, the engines make use of a timing system that allows the combustion process to take turn in each chamber in a synchronized manner allowing for a steady movement of the vehicle. The good, the bad, the ugly. Both diesel and petrol engines are considered fit for use in modern standards, but they both come with their own problems. Let's start with the good stuff. Looking at the petrol engine, a lot of cars in use today run on petrol engines. These engines are the go-to if speed is on top of your list, as they are capable of catching speed much quicker. 
the burning of petrol tends to be faster than that of diesel, meaning you get more crankshaft revolutions with petrol and less with diesel. Meaning more horsepower in petrol and less in diesel. The density of diesel engines also contribute to their lower revolution count as diesel engine components need to be thicker to withstand the high compression inside the cylinders. But the downside of a petrol engine is its thermal inefficiency. What does that mean? When a fuel burns, it releases energy in the form of heat and pressure or a pushing force. Now, if most of the energy released is converted into heat and not kinetic or a pushing form of energy, then that fuel is said to be less thermal efficient. In petrol engines, this is caused by the low compression required in the cylinders to prevent engine knocking. Engine knocking occurs when combustion occurs at the wrong time. For example, before the spark plug ignites the fuel in the cylinder. Diesel engines on the other hand are great for efficiency. And why is that? Well, yes, it is due to the high level of compression allowed in a diesel engine cylinder, which then allows most of the energy to be squeezed out of the fuel thus resulting in a higher force being released. This gives diesel engines high torque and high thermal efficiency. As the petrol engine, the diesel engine has its cons as well. For one, diesel engines tend to exhaust more harmful gases such as nitrogen oxide and soot compared to petrol engines which produce more carbon dioxide. Got it? Yeah. If you didn't know, now you know. Thank you for watching. And once again, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Until next time.